Hey fellas, today we're going to be taking a look at a ROM for the one and only Essential Phone. Now over the last year and a half or so, the Essential Phone has become a sort of sleeper darling in the AOSP community for being an aesthetically pleasing device that runs near stock Android and resultantly has a lot of potential developmentally speaking. So resultantly, we have quite a few appealing ROM options for this particular device, with the likes of AOSIP, POSP, Slim ROM, and most notably Resurrection Remix and Lineage OS being ported to the Essential Phone. So while the near excess of ROMs proves good for, like, user choice, it simultaneously makes it more difficult to decide which ROM is nice to use as a daily driver. So the only options are to take your bets on a ROM that seems stable and feature-packed, or spend an inordinate amount of time flashing ROM after ROM after ROM to see which one sticks best. And if you have a lot of time on your hands, the latter can prove to be a very um, rewarding option. Quite frankly, a lot of people just don't have the time, nor do they care enough. They just want a nice feature-packed AOSP ROM that adds a lot of features missing from stock Android by default. Q Candy ROM, it's sort of a synthesis of a lot of ROMs you'll see on Essential Phone's XDA forum page, but sort of streamlined and essentially the best of all worlds because it retains most if not all of the stability you've come to expect from stock AOSP, but without the beta testing nature of most of those ROMs since the developers sort of cherry picked what worked for some ROMs and what didn't work. Uh, and sort of put the ones that did work into this ROM to maximize stability. So it's not the most feature-packed ROM, but it's definitely daily driver material if you're looking for that sort of thing. So this is running Android 9.0 and the most recent security patch. If we want to take a look at that, we can. Android version 9, June 5th security patch. It uses a Neutrino EAS kernel and by default it is set to the scheduled till CPU governor. Um, instead of Interactive or Elemental X or something like that. I've noticed that UI navigation is smoother than it was when I was on AICP on 8.1. Um, this could be in part due to um, the AOSP version itself rather than the background implementations of the ROM developers. But my estimation is that it's mainly due to the more aggressive nature of this CPU governor. As I see the big cluster sort of max out more often than I do on Interactive or even Elemental X, but it also idles more aggressively, more frequently. Um, so it kind of levels out. Um, so in terms of battery life, I don't notice too substantial a difference between what I was running before and what I'm running now. I've estimated about five to five and a half hours screen on time over, let's say, three charge cycles, which is about average for me. So. Battery life isn't exemplary, but it's definitely not worse off. Um, and again, you can also tweak your battery life by altering the CPU governor, which is going to influence your battery life more than the ROM itself will. So I'm using the launcher that came with my ROM when I flashed it. It's called Ruthless Pixel Launcher, as opposed to Rootless Pixel Launcher. It's basically a variation of Rootless Pixel Launcher, or like a sort of adaptation, more accurately. You have a lot of options in this launcher. Like, practically everything can be customized. I really appreciate the app drawer background customization. Uh, I love the fact that I can sort of make it a blurring of the two primary colors of my um, desktop wallpaper, which is really sweet. Usually I'm used to launchers just rendering the background transparent as opposed to allowing you to take it one step further, I suppose. So of course most of the ROM features can be adjusted in the settings. You do have your quick tile edit options. It does have a gaming mode, which I believe tweaks the CPU governor as well as um, silences all notifications from interrupting your gameplay, which is pretty cool. Um, moving on to the settings. So the ROM specific tweaks can be found in the candy shop. It's basically just a, a, a settings panel full of most of the features of this ROM. So first up is the system pane. You can edit volume button behavior, which is pretty standard for a lot of um, custom ROMs. Uh, here are my settings. Uh, swap volume buttons rotation based is a must have for me because when I'm in landscape, I want the buttons to also correspond, which should be a thing in stock Android, but I don't think it is. Uh, you have, again, just giving you a little um, 
preview, I guess, of the options. In the power button options, you have the ability to turn on advanced reboot, which for me is also a must have um, because it allows you to reboot into recovery or just reboot to the bootloader or restart system UI. It's, it's a must have. <laughs> Again, it's a standard and custom ROM, so it's not really anything special to be fair, but at least it's there. You can toggle on fingerprint authentication vibration. Uh, you have advanced settings here, which appear to be keyboard related. You have toast notification customization, which is also pretty standard. You can adjust vibration and flash settings for in-call situations, uh, as well as system animations. My screen off animation is the CRT TV one. You can adjust the toast animation itself. Um, I always do slide left, so. And likewise, you could set an animation for the power menu. You can also block certain wake locks, but I don't mess around with that since ROM optimizations typically are enough for me in terms of battery life, so I don't really care too much about that. So the next pane houses the lock screen settings. Uh, you do have the ambient music ticker that is pixel standard ported over, which is pretty sweet. Um, I have it enabled, of course, since why wouldn't you? I guess battery life, but who cares? <laughs> and then you can toggle on and off the music visualizer on the lock screen, which is basically just a frequency graph that reacts to the music you're playing, which is cool, I guess. This is a feature I love to have because Android got rid of it with, I think, what was it, Nougat or Marshmallow? Where you have the media cover art be your wallpaper when you're playing music. That seems like common sense to me. I don't know why they deleted it. Like, if Google wants to disable it by default, at least just give us the option. So now I'm playing a song, so on my lock screen, if I could press the right button, it shows it in the background. This should just be a default feature, but thankfully it's here in Candy ROM, as well as a uh, good helping of other AOSP ROMs. A good deal of these are self-explanatory or kind of insignificant, so I'm going to skip over those. Um, you have some clock customization options. I do wish we had an option to alter the clock size on the lock screen, because honestly, this is just kind of small. I wish there was an option to increase the size to at least make it comparable to the widget I have on my home screen. Um, but that's a nitpicky complaint, and it's not necessarily something wrong with a ROM. It's just something I wish more ROMs would include. Um, you have the option to put, of course, the weather on the lock screen too, which I believe is a pixel standard feature, but I'm not entirely sure. Uh, you can also alter the clock style to make it the logo of the ROM. You have that option. I'll just leave it at default. Um, next pane, you have some pretty in-depth uh, quick toggle options. Nice to have, of course. You have your clock and date settings, um, which are observable here. Always have the show seconds on, because um, why not? You can also edit your carrier label, you know. A lot of this stuff is standard on AOSP ROMs and AOSP-esque ROMs, but this ROM is extremely stable. So while you don't have the full breadth of features you'd get in, a ROM like AOSP Extended, you do have the uh, peace of mind of knowing that you're running a stable custom ROM and you're not going to be dealing with random reboots when you're out and about and you need to take a call or something. It's that residual comfort in knowing that you're using a stable ROM uh, and most of the developers of this ROM use this on a daily basis. So they're sort of compelled to sustain the stability of this ROM. Next, we have navigation settings. Uh, I always disable my navigation bar in favor of Pi controls. Um, we can turn it on though, so we can look at the settings. Of course, you have your standard um, navigation bar. You can edit the navigation bar if you wish to make it more gesture-based. I would just keep it on stock, but then again, I don't use it to begin with. You can change, of course, the height and width of it if you use the navigation bar, which is, of course, a nice inclusion. You can also enable multi-touch gestures. I messed around with this for a bit, but it's a bit counterintuitive um, because it does require more than one finger to be on the screen, which I guess is good for accidental touch prevention, but at the same time, it's nowhere near as practical as just using Pi controls if you're going to use something gesture-based. And last but not least, we have a bunch of miscellaneous options uh, like multitasking, icon pack configuration, which is kind of cool. You have some screen capture options here. You can show your CPU info in the corner if you don't want to use like CPU Z or something. Uh, I mean, you could, but again, this is more practical for, I guess, more um, observational things. Um, so we're just going to turn that off because that's slightly obnoxious. But then again, I play most Steam games with like afterburner stats in the corner. So who am I to judge? 
And that's it for this panel. That's where the bulk of the mechanical features in the ROM are. Uh, you do have some extra um, settings sprinkled throughout the settings app. Uh, if we go to display, for example, the display settings is where you'll see the notch settings for this ROM. Uh, you have three cutout styles, normal, which is just standard. If apps support the notch, uh, it'll fill up the whole screen. If it doesn't, it won't. The immerse setting just cuts off the notch, which is not that aptly named in my opinion, because immerse usually means like, you know, expanded desktop, like, but whatever. I guess immerse because you're not distracted by the unsightly notch if that's what they're going for. Um, but then you also have hide. So I have a feeling like they act, they like, messed up the, like they switched the options by accident it's not a big deal so it makes the status bar shorter as if the notch isn't there um and it just looks kind of weird the odd thing is you do have an option to enable the stock status bar height which i assume is just the essential length status bar but it's on and it's not the same length as a notch so i feel like this is a little bug with the app or with the rom rather because it's the same th it doesn't you can't turn it off it's always going to be at the same um, status bar height with this cutout style invoked. Um, it's not user experience crippling by any means, so it's not like it's a big deal. Um, but I, I feel like something's happening here that isn't supposed to happen. Uh, I'll keep it at normal though, since I'm totally content with that. Um, also in the display settings, you do have ambient display to configure. You can configure it to be always on, which is something uh, essential AOSP doesn't give you by default and you have more in-depth options for ambient display. This is pretty sweet. System Sweetener is kind of this ROM's own mini theming engine, wherein you can customize the device to be either essentially in light mode, dark mode, or AMOLED mode, um, and they're named like Light Sweetener, Dark Sweetener, and Black Licorice, respectively. Um, and you can also edit the accent colors. I do have Substratum installed, so I theme through that. I don't have a theme installed right now, but when I do, or when I have one invoked, it is through substratum, so it sort of so it sort of cancels this one out, and it's of course grayed out to avoid conflicts. That being said, you do have the ability to basically make your device look however you'd like on a very superficial level. So you can have dark mode invoked all the time with like red accent colors, which I guess would look pretty cool. So that's pretty much this ROM in a nutshell. Um, not necessarily in a nutshell, but that's basically what the user is exposed to in terms of what you can adjust in the ROM. Behind the scenes, again, I will say performance has been great. There have been no app crashes for me so far. It is genuinely a stable ROM. The developers of Candy ROM are extremely in tune with the community. Uh, they update this ROM relatively frequently, uh, seemingly once every two weeks or so. Uh, so you can expect the next security patch to be um, in effect, I guess, for this ROM in the future. Oh yeah, one more thing in display settings. Um, you do have the ability to change the color profile. So I have it at natural for maximum accuracy, but you can also change it to boosted, which is slightly more saturated, and then saturated, which is just less um, warm. So there we go. It's nice to have those basic options there, sort of Samsung-esque. Um, but yeah, that is Candy ROM. If you have any questions, be sure to leave them in the comment section down below, of course. I'll have the XDA forum link to this ROM in the description, um, as well as my social links, of course. So yeah, thanks for watching. Thank you to the developers of this ROM for taking your time to make something pretty awesome for free. You've just been Evil Design 9, and I'll catch you next time. Later.